All right, solutions to perfect problem two for math 111. Um, what we are asked to do here is solve this equation three different ways. Factoring, completing the square, and using the quadratic equation. Sure, I can do that. Um, let's first do factoring. A lot of different ways to factor this. The way I'm going to factor it is first I'm going to try to find two numbers that Add to negative 1. Negative 1 because that's the coefficient on the x term. And multiply to negative 12. Negative 12 because that's the product of the coefficient on the x squared term and the constant term. In other words, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. So you want to find these two numbers. Look at it for a little while. I think you'll come up with negative 4 and positive 3. And so then what you do in step two is you replace negative x with negative 4x and positive 3x. If you had written positive 3x minus 4x, that's fine. You'll still get the same answer. Everything will work out fine. Um, but the advantage of getting into this form, it's not factored yet, but it's now four terms and we can use factoring by grouping. So the first group, these first two terms, have a 2x in common. The greatest common factor here is 2x. And if you factor out that 2x, you're left with x minus 2. So then you look at these next two terms, and you want to be left with x minus 2. You want to factor out something so that you'll be left with x minus 2. And the something in this case is positive 3. And now at this stage, you have two terms, one over here and one over here, that both have an x minus 2 in them. So you can factor out that x minus 2, and you're left with two, just 2x plus 3 behind. So now I have something times something equals 0. So that tells me either x minus 2 equals 0 or 2x plus 3 equals 0. So either x equals 2 or 2x equals negative 3, in which case x equals negative 3 halves. So here's my answer. The solutions to this equation are x equals 2 and x equals negative 3 halves. Uh, let's Make sure that's true by doing that a couple more times. So now let's use completing the square. 2x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. We only learned how to complete the square when your leading coefficient is a 1 here. It's not, it's a 2. You can fix that problem by dividing both sides of the equation by 2. That leaves me with x squared minus 1 half x minus 3 is equal to 0. 0 divided by 2 is still 0. And now I want to complete the square. Um, OK. The way I do it, by leaving a little space over here, I wish this was a perfect square. x squared minus 1 half x something. I wish that was a perfect square. It's not a perfect square. Um, it's close to a perfect square. Turns out that if I just had a plus 1 16th over here, this is a perfect square. Or I think I'll have to explain why that is, but maybe take my word for it just for a second. Um, I can't just add plus 1 16th out of nowhere, but I could add it to both sides of the equation and get to here. The reason this is 1 16th, a couple different ways you can get there. One way would be you want half of this coefficient, so half of negative 1 half, which is negative 1 fourth, squared 1 fourth times 1 fourth is 1 16th is where this comes from. Um, I guess the other way is if we do x minus 1 fourth squared, what we get is x squared minus 1 half x plus 1 16th if you FOIL this whole mess out. So what I have here, these three terms give me this perfect square. So what I've now done is completed the square. So now all I have to do is solve this equation for x. It um, would be nice to get rid of this square right here, this exponent. But first, I have to get rid of this negative 3. So let's add 3 to both sides. You might be able to do 3 plus a 16th in your head. Um, in case you can't, what we'd want to do is get a common denominator. So 3 over 1 times 16 over 16 is 40. What am I trying to say? Let me write and then talk. Um, I add this 3 to both sides of the equation. But instead of 3 plus 1 16th here, because that would be hard to do, I write 48 16th plus 1 16th, because 48 16th is really just 3. Um, okay, 
x minus 1 quarter squared is 49 sixteenths. So x minus 1 quarter has got to be, if I take the square root of both sides of the equation, make sure you put in the plus or minus, I get plus or minus the square root of 49 sixteenths, which turns out that's a perfect square. Um, 49 sixteenths is a perfect square. Its square root is 7 fourths because 7 squared is 49 and 4 squared is 16. So I get here. And so if I add 1 quarter to both sides, I get my answer is 1 quarter plus or minus 7 quarters. So 1 quarter plus 7 quarters is 8 quarters, which is 2. Or let me write that better. So x equals 1 quarter plus 7 quarters, or x equals 1 quarter minus 7 quarters. 1 quarter plus 7 quarters is 8 quarters, which is 2. 1 quarter minus 7 quarters is negative 6 quarters, which is negative 3 halves. Sure enough, that's what I got up here. So I can solve this by completing the square. A little bit more difficult if you ask me. Um, and then finally, I can solve it using the quadratic equation. This way is a little bit more memorization e quadratic equation. Um, what you need to know is that the solutions to ax squared plus bx plus c are x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So in this case, I have a is equal to 2 because my coefficient on the x squared term is 2 b is equal to negative 1 because my coefficient on the x term is negative 1 and c is equal to negative 6. So if I plug those values into my equation here I get x equals negative negative 1 which is positive 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared negative 1 squared. Um, should I write that? Sure I'll write that and we'll figure it out in the next step. Negative 1 squared b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. And I can then simplify a little bit. Should I put negative, negative 1 here? Hopefully you can see that negative of negative 1 is positive 1. That's where that came from. 1 plus or minus the square root of 1, negative 1 squared, minus negative 48, if you do 4 times 2 times negative, that's right. If you do 4 times 2 times negative 6, you get negative 48. And so 1 minus negative 48 is the same as 1 plus 48. In other words, it's 1 plus or minus, whoa, that's not a 1. It's 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus negative 48 is 49 divided by 4, which is just saying it is 1 plus or minus 7, the square root of 49, over 4, which looks very similar to what we have over here. It's saying that we either get 8 over 4, or 1, this is 1 plus 7 over 4, 1 minus 7 over 4 would be negative 6 over 4, and as we've already seen, 8 over 4 is 6, negative 6 over 4 is negative 3 halves. So there you go, three ways to do the same problem. Some easier than others. Good to know all three because different methods will be helpful in different situations. So those are the three methods that I want you guys to understand to solve a question like this.